Oh, baby. No, no, Gadget Methadone Dispenser. I put gin on top of my gin. <laughs> and I already have shades of discomfort. <laughs> the collection of short stories by Judy Blue. By Judy Blue. <laughs> You ever smell the inside of a hat? I liked it. It smelled like you. Craigslist for her Craigslist? <laughs> no, but worse than that. Zig and Larry ignore a topic. The best parts of hanging out with these guys. Without the hangover. Hey, sweetheart, how are you, dear? Hey, coming back in live for you is, is little baby meat pie and his buddy Ziggy. We're little baby meat pie because why? Good look at me. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, yeah. Because that's what it says on all my arrest reports and birth certificates. Because if I were to be a captured by a serial killer, my plan would be to, to act like I was into it and then ask him if I could call him daddy, but then demand that he refers to me only as little baby meat pie. <laughs> You've thought about this way too much, even if you're just making it up right now. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I sometimes I have silly thoughts. Welcome to Zig and Larry Ignore Topic, where, yet again, we are having trouble with uh, technology. So, the last two episodes, we promised you we would show you our faces. That didn't work. No. Uh, no, so a lot of those were visual gags that made no sense. You didn't want to listen to this show, because why would you? Because we lie on accident. <laughs> um, we learned very quickly what the rest of the world learned 12 months ago. Just just use Zoom. Just use Zoom. What are you doing? It only took us a whole goddamn year. Just use Zoom. Just use Zoom. Just use so, Zoom. It's so much easier. With any luck you can actually see our faces. So please, check us out on our YouTube channel, the same name, Zig and Larry Ignore Topic, uh, and also hit us up at Zig and Larry Ignore Topic at gmail.com. Uh, tonight's um, bullshit comes from a request on that as well. Also, I'm very excited about that. Also, oh, wait, um, but we also, if you're listening to us, whatever platform, whether it be iTunes or, or Spotify, or whatever whatever it is you want to you want to listen to us on give Cam us a, a like and a follow and a and a five star rating cuz that helps us out tremendously <laughs> also i'd very much like to thank the good people of columbus ohio again again because okay. they have once again every month um have have so like they, Columbus, Ohio, you are our uh, your biggest downloads, uh, even compared to the Springfield, Champaign, uh, Decatur, Illinois area, compared to Chicago, Columbus, Ohio. You are now when you add up Springfield, Champaign, Decatur, um, and Chicago, there's still more downloads in the state of Illinois. However. Columbus, you you catching up, my little my little babies. You are you quickly running up on on Illinois. I'm gonna ask you, Columbus, Ohio. Tell your friends, tell your family. Shout it from the mountain tops, because we want Ohio to beat Illinois and really show Illinois what the fuck is up. I did one of my favorite shows, and I think it was in Columbus. That I performed at, uh, at a place called the Shadow Box Live. That is a it's a sketch comedy um, and dinner theater and rock venue that is just spectacular. I'm almost positive it was Columbus. I was definitely I performed in Ohio several places. Does I that also think, have the sex dungeon? Uh, <laughs> you know what? Partying with the people that I partied with, it very easily could have. That <laughs> I just didn't get a chance to see. But uh, it was it was really really cool. I want to say those Columbus. Yeah, Shadow Box Live. Uh, they just just beautiful, crazy rock and roll comedy wing nuts. And just, we had a great time when we went down there. They housed us for, um, for a competition years ago. Yeah, that, that's my kind of place. That's my mm -hmm. kind of place that I, I love those joints. That's my favorite place to, uh, to, to hang out in and, and perform in. And I just realized that my shirt is misbuttoned. 
and that's how you earn the name Meat Pie. Little meat Baby pie. Meat Pie. L I apostrophe L Baby Meat Pie. And that's by failing to fucking <laughs> clothe yourself. Good job, pal. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I wanted to put on a fancy shirt for our for our video recording, mm -hmm. and this is uh, the fanciest of shirts that I own. A Miss Buttoned Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Today I'm I'm spurting this, which I'm a big fan of. This is a mounted Bambi head on the wall. Oh no! Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that caught me. <laughs> Everything catches meat around here. <laughs> Everything catches meat if you. Give it enough alcohol. How is <laughs> we're working on that right now? Yes, I we are. Shit have I have a cooler right next to me because I refuse to get up or anything but urination, and even then, I do have this water bottle as well. So you know, depending. I uh, I was walking past my wife. She's like, "I made you a drink," and I said, "What is it?" She said, "Do you really care?" I said, "Not really." I said, "What's <laughs> in it?" I said, "What's in it?" She goes, four and a half shots of gin." So here's to you, Mrs. And we're going to say Diet Fanta, because I'm not certain. And the last tab in the free world. <laughs> she found it underneath some manner of bus. And an RC Cola crystal. <laughs> Was that a thing? No, no. RC Cola had enough dignity to not do that to themselves. There was Pepsi Crystal, I know. Mm hmm Yeah, yeah, that, that almost came back until somebody was like, please don't, we've suffered enough. It tastes like cola, but it's clear, because... We didn't, wait, you mean you didn't... Buy it, fuckers, <laughs> I don't know. You didn't add the, 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 the false coloring and, uh, and other bullshit to make it brown? Oh, boy, I should, it's probably better for me this way. There are too many goddamn products that, that, um the capitalist America machine just throws at the public that just seemed like a dare or a threat and I, or just like a, a let's see if you'll do this stupid crystal Pepsi is up there there's a whole line of Cheez-Its with flavors that are just off I don't know what's going on there uh, snack or, food should not be Oreos that are flavored like Swedish fish is that a thing yeah there was is the cream flavored like Swedish fish, or did they just say fuck it and they put a flat, they squished four of those bastard gummies together and they put it between two sandwich kippies? Um, I gotta be honest, I don't know because when I saw the display at the grocery store, I kicked it over and and started lighting it on fire. And next thing I know, I was getting tased, and that's why I'm not l allowed back in the schnooks. <laughs> that's why you're a Kroger man from here on in. <laughs> God damn it, I go to Aldi. They don't care if you do that stuff. <laughs> they don't care if you got pants. They're <laughs> mostly fine. All yeah. you need all you need is a quarter for the goddamn cart. And outside yeah. of that, you're golden. It got no pants, just wearing house shoes, not a problem. You don't got a quarter, go fuck you. You didn't bring your own bags, eat my dick and ass. I will. <laughs> <laughs> they actually have those, right? There's, it's like their flair. It's underneath the name tag, but every name tag, it only just says Bob. Male or female, they just all say Bob. Bob. But underneath it is Bob, eat my, eat my dick, dick and ass. ass. <laughs> we do not accept uh, American Express. Well, I will say the greatest invention from from American capitalism is stuffed crust pizza. I'm okay with it. I'm very angry at Little Caesars for a lot of reasons. I mean, they were a real pizza chain, and now they're just like, they're an afterthought where they're just making shit. They're keeping it warm. Like, you want it, it's five bucks. Expect nothing. You're cool. Expect nothing. But now they got this, like, pretzel crust at, at pretzels i love pizza i love pretzel crust should not, i don't that doesn't seem to go with me like because you want to put mustard on it and like i'll eat don't get me wrong i'm gonna eat it yeah if somebody of course. presents it to me i'm gonna eat it i'm not gonna go out of my way to find it and they're not going to deliver anymore because that's not something they do they figure uh postmates will figure it out uh there's uber eats somebody will get it for you we someone not... someone will bring it to your lazy fat ass mm -hmm. absolutely Absolutely. It won't be us, because we also eat this garbage, and it's just ripped all of the gumption out of our souls. <laughs> so this is all, we get minimum wage, and all of this, we're going to say pizza that we can eat, 
Our suggestion is you put it in a blender and then turn it into a slurry and then just a crazy straw that you can sip from the floor just and just like you're suckling on the teat of of American capitalism in bonjour delish and why not throw in a couple of raw hot dogs and some relish we don't care what you do with your life that's the (laughs) That should be the, the corporate when you America. die, we will replace you with someone else. It doesn't matter to us. Corporate America, we don't care what you do with your life. <laughs> the more you know. <laughs> like a good neighbor, fuck you. <laughs> Coca-Cola understands me. Sure, whatever. whatever yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And these trying to, I swear to Christ, if I saw one more commercial... Well, from a company that was like, for, in these trying times, you know, in these trying times, we have to try to pull together, become one once again as a, as a country, as a people, as a human race. Remember, Chuck E. Cheese has got your back. Go fuck yourself. You... Actually, actually, they don't. Chuck E. Cheese went under because of this bitch. No. That's so sad. We have an abandoned Chuck E. Cheese near our house. And I really want to see if I can rent it out. We and, have a mission. We yeah. have to do something with that. Yeah, I, I, just, I know you're going to say skate park. It's not a skate park. It's something cool. I just want to fuck the rat. <laughs> I love that sentence just as it is. I refuse to pepper it at all. There's, there's no condiments on that at all. It's just Larry wants to fuck the rat. Let's let him fuck the rat. I just want to fuck the rat while Pasquale sits in the corner like a gentleman. There was some, and I don't know who it was, but who's Pasquale? And why was I able to gloss over that that quickly? Like, yeah, I know that makes sense. Um, so in the Chuck E. Cheese band, Pasquale is the Italian chef. I... Mm-hmm. I'm amazed at how easy it is for me to accept your knowledge of that. <laughs> yeah, it's a Pasquale. was the Italian chef. He's, uh, he came out of the... Eh, you know up. that I write a lot of jokes. I write a lot, and I do a lot of research for some of those jokes. Some of okay. my jokes some, some. are just, let's pull this out of my head and just make facts up. Because no one's going to Google it. Even if I say, Google it, they re- that's... If you tell someone, you know what, Google it, especially if you're on stage holding a microphone, people will be like, I, you know, he seems authoritative. He's got the voice of a dad. We don't need to check it. But but I really did do the research. And Pasquale is the name of the Italian chef. Was the joke ever any good? Um, I did it a few times. It's It had legs and then I abandoned it because you know that's sometimes what i do like all four of my children had legs abandoned it <laughs> yeah well i went out for smokes and never came back that's my style of parenting it's just pin a 20 to their chest and wish them good luck in the world <laughs> i don't know catch an uber god in these trying times <laughs> we know how hard you're hurting that's why at banana republic it's 15 percent off all bullshit on sunday <laughs> <laughs> Except for you, old man. If the beat of the music is faster than your heart rate, you stay the fuck outside. Any reason to have a sale? Like, you shit your pants? We'll give you 50% off socks. What does that even mean? I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to need those socks to clean up my pants. <laughs> <laughs> Use your old socks well. We got some fresh ones. They're cheap. <laughs> you ever had to squat in the woods? We got clean socks for you. Oh, good. Excellent. <laughs> Hey, I, I just realized the difference between Zoom and what the bullshit we were using. Are you timing this garbage? I got a timer over here. Okay, hey, let's call that good. I realize I should have been doing that myself. Uh, apropos of nothing, that's how you put a big fucking halt break on something. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we were having fun, and then I just whipped out my hemorrhoids. It's like, oh, oh God. <laughs> hey, you kids having fun? Yeah, these are Grandpa's ashes. Mother. Fucker, I didn't even know Grandpa died. Yeah, he died two years ago. We just never told you. Why are they in a Mylar balloon? <laughs> it it was his it. last wishes. Don't be a cunt about it. <laughs> what? No, 
his last wishes were don't be a cunt about it. He was okay with the Mylar, but his wishes were just don't be a cunt about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, if you look at the balloon, we wrote it on there in Sharpie as, as per the will. It used to say happy birthday. And oddly enough, Pasquale, but he used to say happy birthday, Pasquale, but they just would put Sharpie that out. Don't be a cunt about it. Yeah. Can we, uh, it means nothing. None of these means anything. Can we, can we bring up Yuri? I feel like we have to. We haven't talked about Yuri in a while. Um, if this is your first hasn't... episode, we need to explain who Yuri is. Go for it. Yuri and Margo. Um, a love story for the ages. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yuri. Star across lunatics yeah yuri um um well, give me one second because i really want to get his last name right because i want to put it in the description and i really hope that his people contact us for an interview um his people his people are people yuri tolochko mm-hmm. he, uh, he, uh, he is a kazakhstani bodybuilder who married uh, his his a woman, a female, a, an object, a, a, an individual. I don't know how do you just Margot. Let's just say fuck married doll. a Margot, an expensive multi thousand dollar fuck doll. Yes, a death. That's it. A multi thousand mm-hmm. dollar um, fuck doll. Essentially, he paid a lot of money for a tube sock with tits. Mm-hmm. And he has a whole story where he proposed. She said yes. Let's let's just real quick the highlights. He proposed mm-hmm. to a blender. She said yes somehow. Uh, after a while, he uh, she got depressed, so he sent her to get plastic surgery to feel better about herself. At some point later, he fucked it broken, and he had to send her back to the factory to get fixed. And he's putting all this on Instagram. Well, but the, just... while she was away at the hospital, I'm trying to I'm trying to make this sound as good as possible. Mm-hmm. Essentially, yeah, he broke his fuck doll, sent her oh, away right, yeah. fixed, and then found some type of I don't know dish cleaning implement, I think, mm-hmm. and had an affair with it. it. He he found some manner of object in the trash. Nobody can tell what it's supposed to be used for, what it used to be a part of, and he I'm, fucked it. It looks like a, re- it, speaking of Chuck E. Cheese, it looks like a rejected prize from the Chuck E. Cheese counter when yeah. they went bankrupt. They're like, what the fuck is even this? And tossed it in the in the dumpster, and it probably hit him in the head, and he picked it up and went, oh, this looks fuckable. When you don't have enough fucking tokens for the pencil topper, you get Yuri's new fuck brigade thing. It's fuck just, brigade. so... I, I, so okay so we were talking and initially we were doing our best well you were doing your best to not kink shame anybody yeah. i don't have that problem i'm fine with kink shame mm-hmm. um not really. not really uh but we we we, we came eh, we came into the point where not really we came to the point where yeah, but I'll make jury came it the into the point year. too i'm pretty mm-hmm. sure where we were we're not being respectful anymore because he's just doing this for attention. So now, now, now it's working because he's an asshole who just wants attention. And we're talking about it across the fucking world. Yeah. So it's working. Yeah. So now he's divorced the first one and he doesn't want to talk about it. How do you divorce a fuck now? You throw it away? We did find they out. They had a whole the ceremony. They had a whole ceremony. It was legally binding, I think. Uh, would I? I don't. Mr. Potato Head did the. Did, he oversaw the whole thing. Uh, apparently, you could legally marry a lamp in Kazakhstan. I don't know, but he it's he said Kazakhstan. that they were married. It's a big it, place. It, it's a big place with with no rules. And a lot. No, no, no. A lot of different cultures and ethnicities melding together to allow one hairy man who's built like a brick shit house to marry a, a, an object. Yeah. So, but now they're divorced, and he doesn't mm-hmm. want to talk about it. So now he's in a thruple with a new doll that looks like a child, and another thing that's a chicken. I barely read the second article before I got angry. Did you get through it? Yeah, I did. Of course, I did. You know, I did. Uh-huh. Um, it, it, Tell yeah. me about the chicken. Well, look, can we go back to the one that looks like a child? Uh, 
let's yeah. start there because because it looks like a child and he identifies it with it as if it he says um he considers her a sister uh, yep wait. that's nope that's the reaction did he just make having a relationship with the rubber thing weirder yes <laughs> so this is his so he's not married to it. He's fucking his love doll's sister. And and everyone said that looks she like looks, a child. That looks like a child, but he said, and this is him, not me. So I don't want any angry emails. This is him, not me. He said, well, she's Asian, and therefore she just looks younger because that's how it works. Okay, no, she's a doll. And somebody molded her to look like an Asian child. Well, like what? What? Like 14? Give or take? I would say 14, 15. Yeah. It, um, and the I, other doll in the thruple identifies as a chick. Half chicken. Identifies as a half chicken. Half chicken. She's half chicken. Zig. She's half chicken. It's got the body of like a roast chicken and the head of a, of a, of a very expensive sex doll. Mm -hmm. And there is a video attached that I watched of him, him in a, in a Jesus F. Mm, wow. Mm, she, he's in a thong and he's all, um, he's all working his way up on this, this fuck chicken. <laughs> and it's very, it's look, I don't get disturbed easily. I've seen a lot of things. I've, I've, I've even engaged in things that have made me go, Hmm, well, okay, but... Okay. And thank God you know how to draw, because I got to lift you vicariously through <laughs> your sketches. Yes, it's true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you put weird. it where? There's a lot of oil on the floor here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's happening? Yeah. I don't know if it can stretch that far. <laughs> 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 if you flip them real quick, it's it's one of those things. It's uh, oh God damn it! What do you call them when you flip the pages and it looks like it's <laughs> it's like a flip book. Flip book when you flip the pages. What's it called? It's a flip book. Stupid. Right. Thank you. Thanks everybody. So, so here's the, I, there's uh, Carla. Tell Ro poke Rosalie. Wake her up. It's late. It, it's late on a Friday. She's make tell her to take a note. Here's the the attached to this article that you sent me about Yuri, his his not sister fuck doll and and the half the the half the half bone chicken. It's his thruple that identifies as a chicken. My stapler identifies as a meerkat, so I understand on some level. <laughs> oh mm, uh, that, mm, that was hard to <laughs> I'm sure this is not the first time this has been said in regards to Yuri. That was hard to swallow. Um, <laughs> oh, he's eating parts of these fucking things, too. Uh, Absolutely. Um, the video that he posted of his... Un God, this feels... There's so many jokes here, and I'm not going to spoon feed them, and I'm not even going to try to make them. You know what? You all just, just mad lib your own fucking jokes about this. His unboxing of his new sex doll... That's the correct response, Zig. Do they do they come in a, a box? I guess they uh, would, right? They get mailed. Yeah. I, I was always picturing like you went to a store and like picked one out and then just threw it in the trunk. No, that's there's a lot of things in Yuri's trunk that he doesn't want anybody yeah, to see. Yeah, yeah. Much less his brand new child bride that's made out of rubber. Yeah. Um. So he he takes out an exacto knife. It's not okay. The most disturbing thing for me was not the fact that he divorced the first sex doll. It's not the fact that he got a, a sex doll that looks underage. That I he he calls it his sister. It's not the one that looks like a chicken. The most disturbing thing for me is when he went to open the box. He took an, one of those retractable exacto knives and mm -hmm. shoved the blade out about four <laughs> inches. <laughs> Who 
who does that? Uh, you know who does that? A psychopath. Not even a good psychopath. Like a good psychopath knows. You just give it one click so it just barely comes out so you get some like some sturdiness behind the cut. This dumb Kazakhstani piece of, of, of perverted... Oh, see, and I didn't want to kink shame him, but here I am. This this perv is shoving this thing out four or five inches, and it's like, oh, I can't play it to open it up. I don't, and just, I don't know what a Kazakhstani accent sounds like. <laughs> That's Borat, I'm guessing. <laughs> Sasha Baron Cohen, it's a Kazakhstani accent, sounds like oh, Sasha Baron Cohen making a billion dollars. That's what it you. sounds like. I cannot wait. Oh, there it is? Yep, there's or the clicks. <laughs> the most disturbing thing for you is his poor use of an exacto knife. <laughs> this oh. lunatic doesn't know how to use a utility blade, but he sure can fuck a half rubber chicken. I just wanted to talk again. I'm all in love, guys. Beautiful. Okay, and that is the, is, is the voice that a lot of people have heard for the very last time in their lives, I'm sure. I mean, well, I'm never going to not be able to hear it while I'm trying to drift off to sleep. <laughs> it's so beautiful. <laughs> I am in Christ. love. No, mm -hmm. Lord. No, thank I, you. He's making more money off of that bullshit that he had my fucking rubber that he ever did lifting kettlebells. No, no. He's he's making more money on his Instagram. Oh yeah. Than you and I are on this podcast. And that part partially that makes hard. me sad. No, it's not that difficult. Um it's to tell your friends so we can <laughs> monetize. <laughs> Neither one of us wants to keep working our, our regular day jobs. We just wanna we just wanna do this and tell jokes. That got real sad and quiet for a second. Let's bring the room down. <laughs> That's what I like to do. I like to throw a big fucking weight right in the middle of the <laughs> show so that we're forced to claw our way back to Silly Town. Isn't that fun? <laughs> let's, let's, let's really... Clawing let's, your let's way just... back to Silly Town is exactly what a first date with Yuri is. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And I don't understand. The man is so hairy. Don't you have to oil up when you're like a bodybuilder? Like, isn't that a thing? You can't, it, it's his, he's covered. He's, his man sweater is real. Like, it's just a thing. I, it, it's his shoulders. What are you doing? That's him with the chicken. I'm okay, all you're doing this. You want to turn it around? I can't. He's excellent. Yeah, great podcast, Larry. Let's turn that off. Hello, guys. What? This is my new wife, Lola. I talked about her before. Oh, oh. there's the phone. Yep, there you go. <laughs> and we end that because. Uh, God. But here's the, what breaks my heart is if Yuri and Margo can't make it, what what hope is there for the rest of us? Sing? What happens when you divorce the, the fuck doll? Do you do you try to resell it because there is a market? Do you just think, throw it away? Do you just put it in the alley like an old mattress, pretend like it's not yours, and hope the garbage men take it this month? You take it to the recycling center and get the five bucks that it's worth. <laughs> You do have to give it a thorough washing first. Yeah, Otherwise, you got to give it a good squeezing prior yeah. to taking, the, because they'll look in there and be like, "We're not taking that." You, you don't want to be, you don't want to be a monster. You don't donate stuff to Goodwill that smells like ass. You wash that shit first. Yeah, you drive to the car wash, you pin her up where you like would do the uh, the 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 floor mats, and then you just stick the hose right up in the leavings bin <laughs> and put it on full bore. And then you 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 take care. Then you take a nice wax. You give it the waxing. You want to give that the nice waxing, a nice hot wax. Get it good and and shined up. So when they you take it to the recycling center and they look inside and they go, that's fresh. 
All right. I just realized that we live in a world where somewhere on this planet, it's entirely possible in a thrift store, in a Goodwill, in a, in a, in a Red Cross, somewhere there is in the corner a used fuck doll right next to a dresser that's mostly okay, just needs a good refinishing because you've been watching the DIY bullshit on home and garden TV. Uh, that's it's there's a, a whole bunch of uh, paperback books that you're never gonna read. There's one fuck doll that's missing a hand, but it's still <laughs> mostly all right. Uh, and the hair is two toned because suddenly with little nuts with the fucking manic panic, but it's just sitting there, and none of the people who volunteer their time there have ever brought it up. There's a mm. No, just, it's a mannequin. It's not. It smells different than a mannequin. And it's seen more shit than a regular mannequin has. Does it keep moving around the store? Has anyone <laughs> noticed that? It keeps moving around the store. If that's a mannequin, that's a mannequin that's seen some shit. Like, that's... <laughs> it just, it's just sitting there like... It's been dripping for a month. <laughs> there is stuff in it. You just keep mopping up the puddle, but it keeps happening. You just can't put a bucket underneath it. Something. Jesus Christ. And nobody's buying that chair underneath it. I don't care if it's two bucks. It used to be leather. No. no somebody's buying that chair specifically for that reason. Uh, you know, there there is a real market for that, but they're not shopping at the thrift store. They're desperately searching online for it and failing. Little do they know, it's in a small town and fuck it's in a small thrift store in Omaha. It's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, you want the you want the used fuck doll? It's there just making bubbles. That's all it's doing. <laughs> and there's a really sweet old woman who is just too polite to say, it smells musty over there. <laughs> like she won't do it. But she's the one that's gonna buy it and put it in one of those like crocheted dresses and then like a roll of toilet paper underneath it in her bathroom. <laughs> I call her April because I think that's a very nice name. She, Jesus Christ, lady. She's pretty. Look at her. She's pretty. She's hurt. She's damaged. <laughs> How do you give a fuck doll a black eye? I didn't think it was possible. That's not makeup and that's not spray paint. Like so This bitch has been hurt. <laughs> we feel like we need to take her to a shelter. God. Wherever. If anybody knows. It's Yuri. Yuri knows what people <laughs> When they get her in the back, they just stand up and they're like, do we put this in the toy section? Do we put this in the, <laughs> the, home, and, the home goods? Where no, I'm just picturing a fucked up a two-toned hair missing a hand, slightly <laughs> leaking with a black eye that nobody can explain, and with an old Teddy Ruxpin in her lap. <laughs> and the Teddy Ruxpin... <laughs> The Teddy Ruxpin has has an old battery in it that's been, that's just like you know when batteries are left in something it starts to ooze acid but it still kind of works but it sparks and his mouth just opens up very slowly. <laughs> but some asshole has put a copy of of like <laughs> of of Careless Whisper in it. So Stop him. you walk by and he's I'm never gonna dance again. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> and it's, it's somebody who thinks they're an artist he's looking at it and going you know what we are this close to having Tim Burton's own personal masturbatorium what else do we need careless whisper very slowly you might be on to something please <laughs> I, no, I want a t-shirt that just says Tim Burton's masturbatorium Tim Burton's ma masturbatorium fuck Jesus schadenfreude is my co-pilot <laughs> You know what? I just, I, it's Tim Burton's Masturbatorium is just, it's just, if you took Johnny Depp and, and Helena Bonham Carter and made them the same person. Did one of those weird facial mashups. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Wee! To a really, really awkward soundtrack that's a little too jaunty, but still really creepy. <laughs> Banky, boonky, banky, boonk. Bunky Bunky. That's I assume that's actually his inner monologue. Tim Burton, give us a movie. I guess I don't know. Stop, stop, stop casting the same people. These are the guys you need. You Absolutely. you like pasty pa pasty white people? We're pasty white people. We'll pretend to like the Cure too, if that's what you want. 
<laughs> it's Friday. I'm in love. Da, 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 da. Whatever you need. Yeah, I only make. I only like music that I like. Morrissey. I like the Cure. I only like stuff that makes other people sad. <laughs> I'm only... so sorry. God, how do you know you're a cutter? Okay, so. We, we've had a request for this, and I think that we've actually touched on this before. But have we been bullshitting enough to get into this? Yeah, I was going to start playing The Cure if we didn't get into something, so good call. Good. Yeah, let's not do that, because I was a cutter at one point, and I don't need to start up again. Yeah, um, but you only cut me, and that was very upsetting. Yeah, I totally did not understand that particular malady. I did it wrong. Yeah. Um, or right, because I just kept saying, thank you, Daddy. If the God. speaking of which, you still owe me another fifteen bucks. Then, but yeah, that's great. Good for you. Um, so we can we can move on from this, but uh, I think we've touched on it before. In general, you and I are not sports guys. Like we don't really follow sports. No, no. Uh, are you mild, even like mildly passingly interested? in anything like there's no right or wrong answer i understand like people okay if i if you were to be like hey dude let's go to a cubs game i would totally go to a cubs game um you know i've got i got my buddy ricky who he and i like to well what he's a huge bears fan and and if somebody's like hey what football team do you like i'm always like the bears and they're like well they suck they always suck but you know but i don't like if, if you were to say, let's go to a Cubs game, or if Ricky has ever been like, hey, man, let's watch the Bears game, then absolutely. I'll go do that. I'll get into it. But I don't seek it out. I That's even more than what I got. Like, I tried to care about baseball for a little bit. What I like is going to a big outdoor bar with a handful of friends. And there's something in front of me that I really don't have to pay much attention to. That's what I mean. That's but, what I'm yeah. saying. When you, If I said... You know, when I was saying, if you asked me to go to a Cubs game, I'd be like, fuck yeah, Zig and I are going to go to a Cubs game, and then we're going to get real drunk on expensive, like, 8 or $12 beers. Uh -huh. Yeah. And and lead um, the our section in a rousing rendition of 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 a cure song instead of the seventh seventh inning stretch to take me out to the ball we're, game. Let's, it's way too early for a cure callback. You knew that in your heart. And I did. That's why I stuttered. It. It's why I stuttered. <laughs> but there are some contests in the world that I will watch for different reasons. Um, I just, I don't understand watching grown men uh, it's, it, it, go for points. It would be different if, like, they were the Chicago, fucking. Absolutely. That would be more interesting for me to watch, especially yeah, if it was for, aggressive and yeah. done in the winter with helmets on. Just sweaty, um, sweaty bald elbow time. And this is pretty close. Calcio Storico, brought to you by a gentleman on the on the interwebs, asked me to do a little bit about Calcio Storico. And uh, I actually, there's, um, I think it was on Netflix, there's a special about it. And if we're calling this a sport... Holy shit, does it make me happy. Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? No. Okay, it's in Florence. Now stop me if, if you have an aha moment, okay? Uh, Wait, is this the one where they just run around and beat the living shit out of each other? Yes! Okay. Uh, okay, so every June in Florence. That what I love about this is there's four like basic neighborhoods. Um, that partake in this. And the people who play for their neighborhood are from there. So it's not like, you know, like they've been traded uh, from Rome to Florence and they're going to play in Calcio Storica. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. uh, they, they're, they're, they've grown up. They're from this neighborhood. And they give them like, like there's reds and blues and greens and whites, I think, or something like that. They just have like a, a general color. Um, they call it an early form of football, which sure, absolutely... <laughs> I guess. Um, it literally is every June, the four teams from their little neighborhood, they've been working out. And these guys look like fucking bruisers. They are not fucking 
around. They are built like brick shit houses. If you don't have cauliflower ears, you're not even allowed to show up to work out with them. They're working out by eating nails and butt fucking bulls that are pissed off and on meth. And uh, I'm, I'm assuming doing something with the ropes where you have one in each hand and you gotta go like this or something. <laughs> uh, but these guys are not cocking around. They, they wear like these little like shorts and so it's like every other, like I was reading about the actual, so the rules, okay? The matches last 50 minutes. So because every good street fight needs a timer. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's Because they're matches. gentlemen. They only do this once a year because people have died. <laughs> like people get real <laughs> goddamn hurt. Um, the, so in early June, they do the two semifinals. These two groups of gentlemen beat the piss out of each other. Then over here, these two groups of gentlemen beat the piss out of each other. And then a couple of weeks later, the winners beat the piss out of each other. Hooray! <laughs> so it's like, generally, it's like any other like any other sport. There's a ball. You got to get the ball into the opponent's goal. Okay? That's it. You, do, you get the ball into a goal. You get a point. If you throw the ball, you can throw it or kick it. There's really, the rules are very lax. Like, there's not like, you can't use your feet, no biting balls. Like, there's not really a whole lot of that. <laughs> um, it's like, it's roughly, what is it? It's roughly like, the pitch is like roughly a thousand yards by 55 yards. It's big. It's like a couple of football fields. Jesus. Um, yeah. And it's 50 minutes of a melee. They throw a ball in, you're supposed to get the ball to the other, you throw it towards their goal, and like there's like a like a line, you throw it over that. Um, if you cock it up, and you want to make sure you do it, because if you throw it and you get a one point, that's good for one point. You've just <laughs> survived the bombing of Dresden, and you get one point. And if you throw it and you miss, your opponents get half a point, just as a fuck you later. <laughs> so far, I'm it's, it's, I love yeah. it. Yeah. So it's covered in sand. That's just it. It's one That's big not the hit. S word I thought you were going to say, but okay. No, no. It's covered in sand. There's just a white line that divides them. Um, so, guess how many people are on a team? 50? <laughs> Might as well be. 27. Oh my, 27? 27. Why, why 27? Big. Not 25, not 30? Well, I'll tell you because uh, everybody has... Um, they have uh, the positions, you know? So uh, you need uh, uh, absolutely 27. 27. So, by the way, it's 27 players and no substitutions. So if you get a bunch of guys who've been beaten to shit and get dragged off or lie there bleeding, guess what? You're a man down and now you're getting ganged up on. Casa <laughs> Costarico! Once a year in June in Florence, the same place that brought you the fucking Renaissance. Uh, these goddamn guys <laughs> rub some dirt on it and walk yeah. it off you pansy I'm not going to try to uh, do the Italian but this is the translation so out of the 27 you got four guys who are goalkeepers four guys stand by the goal Okay, three fullbacks five halfbacks which leaves 15 forwards <laughs> everybody else is a forward <laughs> however from what I can see there really isn't much of a point because it's just a fucking street fight. Yeah. It's just guys from the neighborhood who literally, Jesus Christ, they just look like the biggest, gnarliest dudes in cell block D and they want to hurt each other badly. So they put them in and one guy blows a whistle. No, that's not even true. Excuse me. They shoot off a cannon yeah, because, okay. it's, because right. this is... Because I was going to call bullshit. There was no way that somebody no. walked out and went, all right, you boys are ready. Here we go. Toot, toot. No, there's somebody who was like, get ready to a kill, you motherfuckers. And then it's a beautiful <laughs> accent. My accents are dead on tonight. They're, they're spot on balls accurate across the board. I mean, yeah. your you. your dialect work is second to most, yeah. really. It's... <laughs> Wait, hold on. No, no, I said that right. No, I'm going to do the math real quick. I got a whiteboard here. Hold on. Okay. The game starts when a dude throws and kicks the ball towards the center line. Okay. Then they shoot the fucking cannon off, right? Wait, then, so they don't shoot the cannon until he kicks off. It, they they kind of like seem to, they seem to like go three, two, one. <laughs> do they, they shoot the it. cannon at the ball? I don't think it matters. You because... have to catch the cannonball or else everyone calls you a pussy for the next 10 years. 
Typically, people don't go for the ball first. They just punch. No. Is it just a lot of taint punches? Uh, kicking, punching, tripping, tackling, wrestling, elbows, knees, chins, and eyes. All these are just fine. People don't fuck with the ball until you physically mangled half of your opponents <laughs> and you feel like, well, they're too banged up to fucking care about the ball. So now we'll go pick it up and run it to the other side of the gun thing and we'll do this for roughly an hour why doesn't espn 6 pick this up and show it i don't know but i tell you what this is a fucking sport i could get behind i'm I telling you direct tv boring is pissed if direct tv doesn't start like if they don't send me an email soon that says hey on on espn whatever we're gonna start showing years of footage that we've been recording and never released and all it's going to cost you is an extra 25 bucks a month <laughs> i would pay it absolutely no. absolutely just to watch these these <laughs> these italian shits beat the living snot out of each other I accidentally play, paid for Adobe Photoshop for a year without realizing it. <laughs> I'll pay money for that. Right? I'll watch these dudes, and it's just... A, Guess which one I'm going to use time. more. Guess how... Dude, but uh, the winner? And I do respect it, because like these people are from the neighborhood. You know what I mean? So it's like, for years and years, it's the same players that are, you know, you know Johnny from around the way. He, he works in IT, and then twice a year, he beats the bejesus out of anybody from three blocks that away. <laughs> uh, the winners get nothing. There is no money involved in this. I can offer no money. No. But upon what your deathbed. They <laughs> used to get a cow that they could take back to their neighborhood. Okay. Because okay? this has been around for like hundreds of years. Sure, but like this seems four, reasonable. What? Four or five hundreds a year. Are we How not we offering a cow anymore? No, now the winning team gets free dinner. <laughs> Still <laughs> worth it. I want to participate. I want to do it one time. It can't even be good. It's got to be like you just got your ass kicked. Here's a coupon to the Sizzler or whatever the fuck they had. The and again, Florence. They take a, a page out of American capitalism, put it in a blender because everyone's jaws all fucked up, and they just threw a straw. Well, I just love the fact that in in a world where people are just like we're we're getting more, we're getting kinder and gentler, we're getting more PC, uh, we're, we're trying to be more inclusive for everybody. There's still a little quarter of Italy. Where gigantic men can beat the bejesus out of each other right around Easter, and uh, and you can bring the kids right after Easter. It's, yeah. the, honestly, it sounds a lot like the hog roasts my old man used to uh, used to to host. Yeah, it's violent, dude. Not the not the calcio, your your dad's hog roast. No, oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was it was a real Donnie Brook. Um, those hog roasts. The rule that you had to uh, uh, hand rip out all of the fur before it was killed, I always thought that that was a little weird. Plucking, plucking a boar. It just yeah. seems unnecessary and it's, very it's, difficult. You have to do it with tweezers. Mm -hmm. And that's a, it's, it's the manly way to do it. So you, you got two, two strong young lads. One's got the boar in a headlock and the other one's got a set of tweezers. And, and you're just... both covered with butter from the nipples down <laughs> because dad's harboring some really weird, interesting ideas. You're not wrong. It's like you grew up with me. And then what's here's the weird, the thongs made of straw. Now that's itchy. Um, but <laughs> how to keep a hold of that boar. You really got to keep that headlock good. I mean, like you got to throw that shoulder into it and really lock down. Because when it gets out, it is horny as hell. I'll tell you the same thing I tell my wife. I don't have to do shit. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, you think it's going to try and bite you. Mm -mm, that thing, it will, it it just, it'll, it mounted my buddy Todd. 
<laughs> you can call me as much of a pussy as you want. I don't want bacon that I got to fight for. I don't need it that bad. I don't give a shit. I feel no sense of, of manly pride to do things like that. Like, no, no, it's fine. That's just, I've never, I've never, I've never made love to a woman and thought I'm going to ruin this woman. Like, I've never done that. I don't need to sweat and throw elbows at another guy while wearing a jock strap for points and a ball. And I don't need to watch your dad masturbate furiously while I am and wrestle a whore. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. Never in front of him because he's scared. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, don't do it in front of him because that, that'll interrupt him half <laughs> halfway in his in his masturbatory session, and that will <laughs> anger him. We went really far off the rails there. So <laughs> after um, after a while, oh, because I was going to tell a story about a hog roast, but you know, oh, what? really? It probably is not for the. I probably shouldn't. Well, I you probably got should. to now. Well, it's it's been a few years ago. The the kids were still pretty little. <laughs> How easy it is to turn you around. I really possibly couldn't tell the story. However, I was five, naked as a jaybird. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the delightful times we had. <laughs> it's um, really difficult, dude. Yeah. I should. It's only you that does that to me. You have this Jedi mind shit. No, nah, no, nah, don't you. Any of our friends will say. If anybody else would be like, eh, you should probably do this, I'd be like, you know what? Uh, uh, you just ball your fist up and uh, fuck yourself. How about that? But you go, hey, you should probably do this. And I go, yeah, that seems like a good idea. Absolutely. And you've <laughs> always done that to me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like a you problem, but, uh, but yeah. so the, the hog roast. Because I'm so in love with you, you just can manipulate me so easily. God damn it. I sound like I sound like a rubber half a chicken. <laughs> you're my little Margo. Anyway, okay. you're my you're my Lola. What could possibly happen at a hog roast that's weird? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> have yours. you ever have you ever been to a hog roast? Um, not really. I mean, like in Hawaii and Tahiti, like you know, they they roast hogs all the time. They pull it out of the ground. I've been to one of those, I've been to a hog roast on each one of those islands, Polynesian style, but not like, not uh, state Not hill jack no. style? Not, no, not, I mean, I, I, what's wrong with cooking a whole pig? I'm, I'm down. Yeah. No, there's nothing wrong with cooking a whole pig. So we, um, it's been, it's been a few years ago. Like I said, the kids were still pretty little. And uh, I, my, my dad's buddy, Bill, and I say he's my dad's buddy, but Bill, and I grew up around uh, Bill and his, his wife, Martha. I swear to Christ, their names are Bill and Martha. Couldn't get more redneck, right? Um, and they live I out... I don't see that, but okay. It's, I mean, it's not, it's not... Anyway, no, yeah, Bill and Martha, it's, it's, not, it's not that weird for me. Okay. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Unless their names are like literally like Bill Hatfield and Martha McCoy or something. Well, it's close. It's Shepard. See, that, that's fine. That could be an astronaut. Bill Shepard's an astronaut. <laughs> you think? Yeah. Anyway, maybe I have a tainted. Uh, anyway, Bill and Martha are good folk, but they're having this hog roast, and I get down there before the old man does, and uh, I just I open up the the doors. I still had the jeep. And mm -hmm. so I just opened up the doors of the Jeep and the kids jump out. And the first thing they do, they jump out of the Jeep and jump onto this little quad. And, and Bill goes, the keys are in it. And Glenn just takes off with his brother and sister who are like this big. They're just walking. And I was like, well, don't die, I guess. So Bill goes, come here and help us. So he and his son, Cody, they're like we gotta we gotta build a roaster for this hog. See, I have a bit much bigger problem with the name Cody. That just sounds like the cute one in a boy band. Yeah. Um, so and trust we, me, I can always pick out the cute one. Yeah, you can. I know you can. I've I've been there. I've held <laughs> that, one, that one on the corner with the rat sounds on his jacket. That's my Cody. I I held the camera. I know what's up. <laughs> <laughs> but so we go to behind the barn. To, and we find the perfect hog roasting implement, which is an, an old oil drum that has yeah. oil left in it. Mm -hmm. we, we cut that in half. 
and then uh so cody and i cut it in half and then install hinges so that we can close it up sure yeah and then we had to find a spit for it and so we went rummaging around more of the junk pile and found an axle and welded a handle to it okay but my, my, my only real problem with all of this so far is you didn't think ahead that you would need the implement to cook the hog before the hog roast? It's like, ah, I'm sure we'll find something in the junkyard to cook it upon. No, no, they were waiting for me to show up to help build it. Did they at least know it's like, oh, there's stuff over there we can use? Or they're like, yeah. I'm sure we'll work, we'll figure it out. Okay. It right. was, we know we're going to figure it out. We'll just wait for Larry to get down here. And, yeah, you yeah. and Larry and Cody can figure it out when he when he gets here. Yeah. And so we take it, we take this axle, we we weld a handle to it. We jump on the quad. Now we have taken the kids up to the house. To the house. Because that's how you, you know it's it's hillbilly. Because you go from, you got to take the kids up to the house. Why the did you one, air quotes the house? Because it's the one house within however many miles. Okay, but it's actually a house. Yeah. You don't need to do this. Okay. Um, so, so we leave the kids at the house. And Bill and Cody and I go down to the neighbors. So we're on the quad. We drive down to the neighbors. Neighbors got a big mess of hogs. And we pull up and Bill goes, well, there they are. Old Jim owes me a favor. I told him I was coming down here to get a hog. I said, okay. And he goes, well, you're the guest. Pick it. <laughs> he did the Mr. Miyagi. Cheers. Yes. And I went, I'm I'm sorry, Bill. And he goes, which hog are we cooking? And I went, I don't want that responsibility. And he's like, no, no, they're all good for cooking. Just pick one. So so I I went and picked, I was like, I, I, I guess this one over here. And he just hands me a pistol and goes, all right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, so we, we, we do what we got to do. We take it back. We dress it. And then take that, that axle that we turned into a spit. <laughs> got the fight. And we did, it, we did all the way through. You, you finger cuffed it. Yeah. He looked and he, <laughs> th that whole, <laughs> he looked exactly as he <laughs> should have. Um, and then. My buddy Hoss. Well, the day went real south for him. He just got shot in the head and it actually yeah. shoved up his ass. And I mean, so you don't really plan for that. We're all taking turns because we, Cody and I are taking turns trying to rig up an engine. That yeah, because that'll take it. forever to try to do that by hand. Well, I mean, but we, every, like everyone's taking turns manually and Cody and I mm -hmm. are trying to rig up the engine, but we couldn't get it geared down enough because we, we pulled... <laughs> We pulled one off an old riding mower. How many RPMs was Babe doing on that thing? <laughs> About 110. I mean, that That'll bitch was just, and like, its legs were just flipping. <laughs> and so, fortunately, my buddy Haas shows up, and he's like, all right, let's do this, and we gear it down. So, I mean, we've got the most elaborate. Great for comedy, not great for cooking. You're not going to. To get an even sear of that little bitch is just flipping its grease willy nilly <laughs> like a fucking old uh, show on Nickelodeon, but just gack going everywhere. D double dare. Pig, what are you doing? Warming up the carcass just enough to spin it real good. <laughs> so, but yeah, after we uh, we get it done, I mean, it takes because we're cooking it that night but we're not serving it until the next day. Okay. And so we get it. God bless it. We have a new tarp. This is so hillbilly. And we spread it out on the back of a flatbed truck. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then Haas and I lift the, the animal out of the roasting contraption that we created that afternoon, put it on the flatbed truck and go to, butchering it and Haas and I and he lives up to his name my buddy Haas he is he he looks like Haas from from uh from from Bonanza except bigger tell me it's not a nickname 
It is, but it's like from the day okay. he was born. Okay, then tell me his real name is like Martin or Timothy. <laughs> it's it, it's Marion. Okay. Okay. So um so it's my aunts. Yeah. <laughs> but we just keep working our way up and we Haas and I get up to the to the head and we start cutting cheek off and we're just mm -hmm. eating because yeah. I mean you don't oh, oh dude, yeah, yeah. Pork cheek. And he and I are just eating this pork cheek, and we're like, we'd cut bits off, throw it down, then we'd cut another piece and just eat mm -hmm. it until um my my old man just realized what we were doing. And he was like, you two fat fucks, get away from this shit. We got to save some for tomorrow. Quit Sorry. eating that. Quit eating that cheek out of the back of that truck, Marion. <laughs> you fat shits, get away from that pig <laughs> face. We're serving it to company come tomorrow. I think it's going to be a little creepy if you like left part of it on the carcass and people are showing up but the face is just half hacked off like Saw 7. Like, what just, happened here? <laughs> just a real Lord of the Flies situation. We just put its head right on a pike and was like, welcome to the party. We had a running bet going seeing how could we snack in the most disturbing way to the children possible. And we went with eat the face first. What do you think? Well, that's the most beautiful thing is Willow comes running up. She's like, Dad, what you doing? And I was like, I'm eating pig face. She goes, I want to eat pig face too. And I was like, that's my girl. Have some pig Ooh. face. Good job, darling. Yes, you do. Yeah, pig face is the best. I did. Uh, yeah. Sorry to any vegetarian friends we have. Uh, I have none. I have a few. This I'm kidding. I'm sure I do. I don't care what you eat. Just don't tell me what I can eat. I don't care what you want to eat. It's that's, fine. That's a th yeah. My my. I've got a, a friend that's a, a vegan. Has been a straight and he's a straight edge vegan and like mm -hmm. used to play in straight edge punk bands. He's a brilliant comic. Clay Foley is his name. I want to plug him to anybody that's listening. He's a great dude. But um, Clay and I have traveled a lot for comedy. He is a vegan, and obviously, I am not. And how the hell are you? Can you go on the road and be a vegan? What does he eat? Not much. The bag that your food came in. <laughs> yes, actually, he just and he can't even eat that because of the grease. He just smells it. Oh. He just runs on fumes and and superiority. <laughs> <laughs> and cowers during strong breezes yes yeah. but that's the thing clay and like i said clay and i are good buddies and so we make fun of each other a lot on stage like i'll i'll joke about him running on fumes and superiority and he's like you know i don't even mind the beef jerky farts in the car because he's such a good conversationalist <laughs> uh, hey buddy we've we've hit our time oh goodness well then i get to keep all of these for another one. Oh shit did i did I did I really sidetrack it tonight? Sidetracking is our show. Who oh right, I forgot. We ignore it, Tom. <laughs> Who gives a fuck? And we ignored the hell out of this. No, we could do. Uh, I I had some uh, some strange sports from around the world. Oh, I thought that was just the one we were talking about. I was only asked to do the one we were talking about, and that sent me down a rabbit hole. I just had a lot of other fuel. Should we need to get to it? I mean, it's just it's just like competitive slapping, cheese rolling, you know. Stuff that you need to know Jeez, about. We, you know what? I've got a, uh, the next episode. I've got a very small topic, just a little something. So maybe we can talk some more about these strange, strange sports and and my silliness. We can give it a shot. Uh, I, I have a plan for for next week, so we might not be able to get to it. Well, we'll wing it. Guess what? We'll okay. wing it. Shocker! What? We're gonna <laughs> wing an episode? Yeah. I don't See know what this? to do about that. This is me after getting a haircut. I really need to clean up the uh, the danger dungeon if we're going to be doing video. It's just it's just a very messy hat rack and a punching bag. Mm, I just have the fact that I need to be this close to a TV at all times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey pal, what'd you learn? Uh, I learned that your barbecues involve, uh, I'm guessing, tire fires and firearms. So that's a thing. Not mine. My peoples. That's a difference. 
<laughs> and I learned that I was right weeks ago when I demanded that you just say that Yuri is a lunatic cocksmoke. Yes. That, yes. Nope, you're Those absolutely are... right, and I, I admit it. I learned also that hopefully Zoom will make our faces go out into the YouTubes. Remember, we have a YouTube channel. It's called Zig and Larry Ignore Topic. That's on YouTube. And you can hit us up at Zig and Larry Ignore Topic at gmail.com. And if you ask me to do something, I'll probably do it because I'm a whore for your attention. Yes. And remember, whatever platform you're listening to us on, give us a like, a subscribe, and a five-star rating, and a review. It helps us out tremendously. It lets us do this. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Do we really still need to say that anymore? I mean, I, I know we're old. Every sound... time until it happens more. <laughs> All right, fair. Yeah, you're a whore for attention, and I just want to just want to get butt fucked by your five star ratings. I'm also a whore for butt fucking, but the, the hemorrhoids just they they put they put the kibosh on that. <laughs> See, and I've I've found that it really um it really helps with the hemorrhoids. You give it a little bit of a <laughs> down in there. Yeah, you fucking me up the ass helps with your hemorrhoids. I'm not sure how that happened, but it's really messing up my I, Sundays. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just going to, as Kyle Kinane said, I'm just going to have weird Thursdays. <laughs> What'd you learn, pal? What I learned is um, that you don't mind that I butt fuck you. <laughs> Regardless of the hemorrhoids. Anymore. <laughs> um, I also learned that there is a sport in, in Italy that I really want to try one time. You don't need to go to Italy to try it. Just run in my neighborhood at 2 o'clock in the morning and start screaming racial slurs. Guess what? You're playing the home game of Costco Historical all of a sudden. But you're, you don't have 26 guys with you. you got you and hopefully a brick. I don't want to yell racial slurs anymore. That's that's how you play Costco Historical in the home game. <laughs> I do. Okay. Hey, guess what? What's that? I love you. I love you back. <laughs> <laughs>